Hi everyone, I'm Felipe Schmidt, part of the architecture team at ITSM Group. In today's video, we are going to talk about how can we debug widgets in the easiest way. Sometimes we don't have access to the code because the widget is read-only, the widget is out of the box. And sometimes you don't have to clone the widgets to do that. You can simply use what I'm going to show you. So let's start. Let's say we are in the index page here. In the last video, we talked a lot about those icon link widgets, those three in here. We can use the show widget customizations and see the icon links. And if we see the code of this widget, it's something generic. And we don't know what is in here on in a specific instance. And sometimes we need to debug. And here it says this widget is read-only. It cannot be edited. So how can we do that? The magic starts whenever you control right click in a widget. And you also can do that to any widget of the page. For example, this widget here is the current status. And you can simply control and right click as an admin. And you can use this log to console scope data or simply scope. What here means and how can we see that? Whenever you open the developer tools from your browser, in this case here, I'm using the Google Chrome. If you open, and for example, you can open by right click and using the inspect, you have this console here. Let's make it clear. And whenever you control and right click, you can use this scope.data. This scope.data will show all the information which is stored in the data dot something, basically in the data object. So in this example from the icon link, we have some variables called data.href, data.target. Uh, in those two variables that we have stored in here, we can simply see them here with the href and target, meaning we can do and see it to all the widgets from the page. And with that, this makes sometimes very easy to identify why something is not working as it should. So in these three specific icon links, we have different hrefs and we can directly see what is going on. And what is the difference between scope data and scope? The only difference is that in the scope, whenever you log the scope, you have access to the whole controller part as well. But whenever you log into the scope.data, you are logging into the data itself. So basically the dot data is an attribute inside of the scope in which you can also access in here. Sometimes you want to quickly have access to the data itself so you don't have to see all the variables from the controller. So this type of debugging is only going to be shown to you to in your browser. And this is very useful whenever you need to debug something, for example, which is failing in prod, for example. In production, let's say you have an issue and you cannot add logs to the widgets, also because the widget is read-only, because it's out of the box. And you can simply use this log to console and this will save your time and save your, your life sometimes. And you can use the log to log to console, sometimes you're not interested in the logic of the widget. You're not interested in anything which is inside the widget, but you're only interested on the variables which were defined. And this you can simply do by, for example, using the scope.data. And then you have here some variables which were defined inside of the current dot status. In this case here, of course, we have some null, some empty arrays because everything here is empty, it doesn't show us any information, but let's do it with the top rated in here and let's do with that. And we have an array here of one article, exactly this. And then you can simply keep expanding all those arrays or uh, attributes and you can see all the information regarding here. And this will help you to go faster with some debugs. Sometimes we have some custom widgets and those custom widgets, let's say it's not enough to do this control right click, lot to console. Then what we need to do is to simply add some console on the widget itself. 
Let's do it quickly here by cloning this widget and saying um, fs icon link and let's create it as a as a page. So here I have my my widget cloned and I can simply access this ID equals the page that I have created, control right click and I can simply add some options to my widget to say this is going to go to the index page and test and let's make it we open the developer tools here by going to the inspect quickly and then we see all the information about the widget, log scope data, and then we have our index page. Let's say we have a big logic in here and it's not enough to simply do this log data because we need the data from the GR for example. So let's put it like we need to add some logs by doing this console.log and then we can simply use the GR and whenever we refresh the page we are going to see that all the information regarding the GR in here is going to be shown. So as a best practice you should always do those console.logs in the developer instance first and of course do not forget to remove those console.logs whenever you are pushing to test and production instances otherwise the consoles for everyone is going to be displayed here with lots of information.